Good morning, hello everybody, welcome to a new week. It is now Monday, just after dinner time on Monday. Um, thanks everybody for uh, the, I think it was 30 or 40 people on when I premiered the video last night, um, last Sunday, should I say. Um, I've enjoyed that. I mean, I don't normally get a chance to do it on uh, Sunday night because I play pool, but with the current situation, I've found myself um, in the house on a Sunday evening, so I thought I'd try new things on uh, the laptop. So, very quickly, I'm here in the back garden. I, I've got a few of the giant carrots um, that I've got spares. I'm going to try a couple of new things with the carrots. Uh, I wasn't going to do this, but I was going to do something sort of similar. So what I've got here is I've got two, um, two litre pop bottles. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them up. I'll show you how I'm going to do it. I'm going to transplant two of these big carrots into here. Now, when I go down to the garden, I'm going to be trying this similar technique with uh, Lucasade bottles um, for a reason as well. Uh, and I'm going to be growing them, um, but I'll show you them later on in the video. Start off by removing the bottoms off the bottles and keep a hold of the bottoms as you will need these later. Once this is done, put a few holes in the bottom and then fill the bottles up full of compost. Now we're getting them sorted out, I'm going to take these carrots out and transplant them into the pots here. Now usually you'd only ever transplant carrots for growing giant carrots. You don't transplant normal eaten carrots because you normally just sow them individually or in a drill in the garden in the soil. There we go, recycle sorted. So I've just got these standing pots at the minute so that they can be upright. Transplanted them very carefully, but you don't even have to grow them first and transplant them. I wouldn't recommend it. I only did that because I was growing them for giant. Um, now, what I'm going to recommend is, the beauty of taking the tops off here, put the top back on, you've got your own little propagation, your little greenhouse, mini greenhouse. Sorted. <laughs> but I'll show you with the Lucas Air bottles what I'll do with them. I had to do it tomorrow. Time to head down to the garden, get me exercise in. Okay, so I'm now down the garden in the greenhouse. It's absolutely lovely and warm in here with that sunshine. But as you can hear, the wind is howling outside. Granted, Dave's not here yet, so I'm going to have to come up with stuff what I'm going to do in the meantime. Um, something that you can do and you can join in with if you like. It's never too late. You can do it in the next few weeks. I'm trying something a little bit different. Let's call it an experiment and see what happens. It's involving these carrots. And all you need is a pack of carrots. Lucas Aid bottles, piece of wood, and a few screws. Now, you don't even need the latter. Basically, you don't need the screws and the piece of wood. You can do this. All I'm going to be doing is, like I showed you earlier on, some carrots into these Lucas Aid bottles and seeing what the outcomes are. So, I'm going to do first, I'm going to get myself all sorted and prepared, and I'm going to screw these bottles to the plant of wood so that I can get them out of the way. There's another handy tip for you as well. In the minute I've just got a few max compost I'm going to be using for the um, carrot bottles. Um, if you don't have a sieve, the next best thing is a mushroom tray. Now, if I just go side to side like this, there you go. Larger bits, nicer bits underneath. Now you can go one extra and there's some of the mushroom trays do have um, smaller holes, so you get a finer grate. Um, so there's a top tip for you. So what I've done, take the pole, I've put it around the top. There's actually a line that goes all the way around, which you can follow. Obviously, we've got the little top section there, which can go across the top now. Take a little propagator. Fantastic. Now remember, you do need to put drainage in the bottoms. Me, I'm not going to bother, I'm just going to take the lids off. If you do want to keep the lids on and poke holes through the bottom, that's absolutely fine as well. Like I say, this is all just an experiment. So what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to attach these to this board. As far as I can get down there, one by one. Help out with the screws, because if you just put the screws in, there's a good chance it might tear. Um, I'm putting a washer on my screw, so that it keeps this, this surface area a lot more, uh, a lot larger, so that it keeps it in the place a lot better.
Now that would have been a lot quicker if I'd brought my tools with us, <laughs> but I didn't know how to go old school with the hand tools. So there's six bottles all lined up nice and neatly. So what I'm going to do now is just fill them up with the compost and then uh, I'll get the carrot sold over the top. Change of plan, I'm going to do three with caps on, three with caps off, but I'm also going to put some paper in, uh, use tissue paper, probably be a lot better, uh, or kitchen, kitchen paper, um, toilet, kitchen towels sort of thing. Um, I'm going to fill them up now, then I'll sow the seed. Okay, now I've got these all sorted, I'm going to make a little impression at the top, right in the centre, my finger, about a centimetre down, in all of them. I don't want to compact the compost at all. I've knocked it down by hand. And I've got, I'm going to do a sweet candle myself. So you can go any, any ones you like. So, I've got, they don't worry about the colour of them. They're there for that, that's for a reason. It's helped with the germination. Uh, get the little end of the hair and the um, little cane. You can do the end of a pencil um, and uh, make things a lot easier just to put them in. You can just lick the end of the end of it. Bit of moisture on then. Then that'll be a lot easier to pick the carrot up. And just put that into there. So I'm putting three in there. I'm putting three in each one. You can put two, you can put three. But I'll be getting rid of the, the weakest one, or I'll be getting rid of one anyways. I'm going off the top there, as you can see. We've got carrots in all of them. I'll just put it over the top. There we go. 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 That's him done. Then, these tops. I'm going to make little slits, and I'm going to put the slits in. I'm just going to push them down. I'm going to figure out a way to keep them on there without having to tape them. So just bear with us and I'll see if I can come up with something. Right, it's a bit of a faffle, but uh, what I've managed to do is I slip, put, cut a couple of holes in the top side, the sides here. Uh, I'm just basically squeezing them in so they're overlapping and just forcing them over the top. It's probably an easier way to be honest. Um, over the top and put them on the inside of the bottle lid section just raising at the top there and squeezing them in there we go and well clearly i put a bit of water in on the inside before i started but there we go carrot sorted two four six they'll stay in there that's it no feed nothing like that as soon as they've germinated i will um i'm going to put these in the actually i'm going to put these in the polytunnel and um, i'm going to screw them onto the the board um as soon as they've germinated, I'll lift the tops off and just leave them. And we'll see how things go with these. There we go. Carrot in a bottle. We'll see how things go with this. Okay, it's absolutely blown a gale outside. Uh, there's not much work going to be done outside. I don't think Grandma Dave's going to be over. Uh, the wind causes his eyes to uh, water really badly. So I think he's just going to be hiding out, even though the sun is shining. Um, I'm just tinkering on here. Uh, once again, I'm doing carrots. So I'm going to show you how another way in which you can do carrots as well. So what I've got here is a 12 litre pot, that's all you need, something that's a good foot uh, foot in depth, something like that, and all I've got is the compost in here straight away, I haven't saved it, I've just chucked the compost in, broke all the big bits up, um, I'm using Amsterdam Forsen, you can see you get hundreds and hundreds of seeds in these packets, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to do one of these buckets uh, every week, I've got me carrots in my hand there, don't want to be doing this outside because the carrots will blow all over. I had that issue with a couple of years back. And all I'm doing is just lightly spray, lightly sowing these carrot seeds all over. I'm not bothered about placing them or anything like that. I'm just making sure there's good, good spacing. And there's no bits that I can see where I've missed. Just for germination purposes. Yeah, all the spares put back in the packet. And that would be for the next lot as well. 
So I'll get a good few uh, few sowings out of that. There's 2,000 seeds on average. And once that's done, I'll just firm them down just so they've got contact with the compost. And then over the top, just a light covering of compost. Not too much, just a light covering will do. And last but not least, the tag, so that you can see exactly what it is and when it was sewn. Then in seven to 14 days, these seeds will germinate. Now, I don't want to be separating them. Now, I don't, when they've come up, you can start picking them out. Now, personally, I don't want to do that. I want to wait until they get a little bit bigger and then I can thin them out and pull them out as and when and you can use them in salads and things like that as well when they're just like little baby carrots then the more you thin out you get a succession of uh, carrots and then the last lot that you leave in you get the nice big ones which you can store you can keep a hold of you can you don't have to use compost you can use a fine uh, sandy um soil uh, which is what i've got in the other buckets as well because i'm busy emptying one of the beds so i'll just be filling that up with um the, it's the stuff that I put the parsnips in last year and I had the good the good curvy parsnips. That's just because it hit the bottom of the book the bottom of the bed. Um, so I'm using some of that, but in the meantime I filled up two of these buckets and that's the carrot saw. Well that's me done for today. Um I will show you what I've brought down from the showroom uh, the grow room at home. Um uh, basically the cup the big leaks I brought down. Um and I'll show you what else I need to get done with that as well because I spotted something straight away, hence the reason why I brought them out. So sorry about the wind, it is really, really bad and the polytunnels of course not stretched over. Um I brought the big Cumbrians from home. Uh, the ones in the big uh, I think these are 40 litres to be honest. Um so I brought them down and I brought them down for one reason. Let me show you. Apart from they're ready to come out and they need to start hardening off. Um I looked underneath one of the flags and you can just see there rust nightmare so i've brought it straight down and i want to give it a drop of bumper which i've already got pre-mixed and i want to rub it on pre i want to rub it on i want to send a couple of messages just to see if because it is still young i can get rid of that flag and just burn it straight away and that'll uh, limit the possibility for it spreading i've decided i'm not going to risk it it's uh it is a nice leak this this flag's not going to be anywhere in the next few weeks and anyways so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to snip it off feels like sacrilege <laughs> feels like absolute sacrilege so right on there let me see what i can do this with one hand snip snip i don't want that stuff anywhere near any of my other leaks That's sorted out. Good half an hour. Chopped a load of sticks for the fire. Um, our fires are stopped from the first of April. Um, these will be for the greenhouse. That's that sorted out. So I'm going to go outside and I'm going to um, start digging over the bottom of the trench so that me and Grandad tomorrow uh, can get the trench and start to get filled. Jobs are good. It's that side done. Back done. This middle section's done. And that section down there is done as well. Good morning. It's uh, Tuesday now. Uh, I'm down the plot and I've been met by a nice surprise. These two tulips are always the first ones to open up. But I've also got the others are starting to open up now as well. And them ones over there have already have been opened up for a little while now. They're early tulips. And I'm also starting to get the heads and all the ones down there, so what a show this is going to be. Not only that, the yellow ones that I planted last year 
are starting to come open now as well. And these are looking nice as well. Yeah, so look forward to seeing how they, when they all come out, they look lovely. Well, second surprise of the day, now it's about half past 12 here. Um, I've, 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 with the kids in the morning, I've not been able to get down. Um, I've come down and I've gotten a bit of a, a nice surprise again. Full of surprises this morning. Glad that Dave's been in and he started moving the compost the way the soil from his garden into this the way his beds. <laughs> There's not that much needs to be done now, actually. He's pretty much filled them all. So I'm just going to uh, get the last last uh, few and take this grass out. So I've got this bit to do here. But he's already made a good start here this morning. So that's my task at the minute. So I'm going to go and get my gloves on. I'm going to go and get the wheelbarrow, get my shovel and get cracked on. Right, that's on beds filled. I've even put some blocks on the end there. So keep the keep the, 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 the soil in. Um, so that's one bed done, back bed's done. That side bed's done as well. Um, I've made a little bit of a change here, which I need to sort out. I need to wrap on plastic as well. Um, this this middle section here is high, higher than the rest of it, because I want to keep this as topped up as possible. Um, so what I've done is I've put a board on this side so that I can keep this up here without it sinking onto there, so I can keep all the beds level as possible. Because um, as you can see, I've just winged this as much as I could. <laughs> Right, I'm going to, actually, while I'm here, I'm going to get there, I'm going to move these out of the way, and I'm going to start putting some gravel down here. Well, I ran out of the gravel there. As you can see, I only got half of it done. The beds are all filled, though. Um, I'm just going to have to wait until I can get some more of the gravel before I can finish off that job. Have you job. seen the lad next door? He's um, busy tidying up, and uh, he's actually got a big sagebrush uh, next door. And what he's done is kindly given me a few uh, cuttings um, so I can see if I can root them. So I've got my own sage. Uh, so... All I'm going to do is, I've got a bit of water, I'm going to snip off near where the leaf node is, remove the bottom leaves, and then just leave them in the water. Right, that's the sage cuttings done. We'll see what happens with them over the next few weeks. Well, these sunflowers have just went absolutely ballistic. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pot, the, pot them up now, because they need to be potted up. Um, I've got the Titan ones and I've got the four from the EVGVA pack. So I'm going to get them four done oh. first. There's the first lot of sunflowers potted up. I've just got a ton more to do now. <laughs> sorted. Titan sunflowers. That's the first lot sorted out there. Uh, I'll just straighten them up a bit. They'll sort themselves out in the light though. Um, I've still got... Uh, uh, I've got another another pot which I need to take home, um, which I'm busy. It's in the car at the minute. I'm going to get them potted up as well with uh, the pine cups at home. So these are the college cuttings that I took on the 18th, uh, the 3rd I think it was. Uh, in fact, let me just double check that. It was sort of, oh no, it was the 2nd of February I took. So as you can see here, they're doing really, really well. Full of root, which is nice. Root at the bottom. They're going, that's going to need to be potted on shortly. Um, a friend of mine, Debbie, uh, another allotment holder, uh, is, has, um, not had very good germination with her collies, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this over for her. What's the matter with you? You're getting lower and lower, aren't you? What's the matter with you? I'm going to bring the uh... new back. <laughs> <laughs> get installed <laughs> well bless granddad dave <laughs> he was just putting that on by the way he's all right um i've uh i've gotten them nine um quality onions uh for my head over to his now because he's got his trench all ready to go so i've got three of my own saved uh onions from the a seed head three from the b seed head and three from the pete's back garden um kelsey saved so i've got these ones i'm going to tell them to pop the the middle ones up um, until they're ready to plant out in a few weeks time. you got to look after your little lads, don't you? <laughs> no, he's been good to me, so I'm going to give him nine of these ones and nine down at home. That's still in the grow shed. That's a little bit behind. Uh, it shouldn't make a difference. He's not doing it for sure. He just wants to grow some nice big onions again. There we go. There's his first nine onions put into his greenhouse. Do you see anything getting out, mind? You should have been an actor, you know that. 
to an ounce, son. You've got to love him, haven't you? <laughs> Bloody off, he's rock just like me. Um, I'm just coming into the mine now. Uh, I'm going to lock up, and that's me done for today. So, I'll see you uh, tomorrow, Wednesday. Hello, good morning. It's uh, Wednesday morning. I'm at home in the Lotland. At home in the Lotland. I'm at home in the greenhouse. Uh, as you can see, my wee bird's sitting in the nest. Um, I've got some more sunflowers to pot on. So that's exactly what I'm going to be doing this morning. Um, I'm going to pot these 13 sunflowers on. Then uh, see what else I can get sorted at home here. There we go, 13 Titan sunflowers, ready to go. And that's it, simple as that. Put it on the 18th, put it on the 1st the of the 4th, and then once these are filled out, they'll be going straight outside into the ground. Well, here's something that I totally forgot about. <laughs> it does happen from time to time. Um, sweet peas that I put in in uh, November, they haven't really been the best, to be quite honest. Um, they did get mauled by a lot of, uh, lot of mice, but, I've managed to get a few, anyways, these will be going outside at the allotment, down the other side from where the other peas are. I'll have to get them down, taken down to the allotment when I get an extra chance to. And there, Leslie's. I've got a root system on them. I might have to pinch a couple of them, actually. <laughs> yeah, some of our roses that I got out for Christmas as well. It's nice to see that there's uh, some new growth coming up on them. Uh, these are going to be for our show roses for our garden, but at the minute they're just uh, sitting taking over inside the greenhouse. We've got some uh, other ones there as well, which are I've got, we've got from the, the nursery, which are starting to come through as well. Right, let's go and have a look in the shed, see what's happening on in there. Right, look at the grow shed. As you can see, there's still lots of things going on in here. Let's take you around and show you what's happening. So, in the little heated propagator. Got some Gary Heeks's beetroot. Um, got some cool Robbie growing on there as well. It'll nearly be ready to be potted up. And I've got some red um Kilimano, what's it? Kilmaro uh cabbage there as well. Um I got them seeds from these are tomato seeds here. Got them from Rodney Hollowell uh last I think it was two years ago. Uh just different varieties there. I've put the rest in to see if any of them germinate. I didn't really get a good germination from them the last time around. Perhaps I should have chitted them this time. But I've put them in, we'll see if anything comes from them. These were the giant parsnips. They might still be the giant parsnips. I might just pop them into the uh, the two little buckets and see what two little uh, pop bottles and see what happens. Um I don't know that's what to do with them basically. Uh, it doesn't look like there's gonna be any shows this year. These things here are the clapton cauliflower. I started these on the 22nd of the 1st, which is January, um, and I potted them on again, and uh, the roots are right down the bottom as well. Now, I potted them on again on the 17th of March, so these have been in for a couple of weeks now, and they're already ready to be potted up again. I even potted out, and I've got 12, I think, in total. Something different to try. At the back here are the heavy, heavy onions. There's a few, uh, doesn't, to be honest, I can't really see a difference from them from the last time, but I know that they are getting bigger. Um, same with this one as well. They're not starting to bulb yet. I have been keeping an eye on them and I need, actually need to take that flute off there. That flute's no good now. So, let's take that flute off. It's starting to die back. But yeah, they're still ticking over. Um, they'll be taking down the allotment shortly and these are all going to be going into the 40 litre air pots. Moving down here, got some Peter Hole and onions. These were potted up on the 17th of the 3rd as well and they're reacting well. Um, I've got the other six down at the allotment. Um, I've got some other onions at the back there. I don't even know what they are. I've lost the label for them. can't remember what they are. The same with this one. I think this is a Pete's, uh, Pete's back garden one. But that's responded well to being potted into 3 litre pots as well. These here are my giant swede. I've got two different varieties. I've got giant swede from the AGVGA pack and I've got giant swede from Medwins as well on the left hand side. Um, they're not quite ready to be potted up but uh, they'll not be that far off. I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to get all of these um, 
leaks out of here because they can go down to the garden now. They're the last three of the Yorkshire Giants. So I'm going to get them taken out of here and taken down to the allotment. These beetroot are absolutely flying. So these are the giant beetroots that I potted on the 19th of the 2nd and then uh, again a month later. As you can see at the bottom there, they're already reaching the bottom of the pots. They'll be doing, uh, oh, oh god they're stuck. <laughs> They'll be getting potted up again in about another two weeks time. Um, I need to get them a drink actually because they, they need a bit of a drink the way they're going. But, they're, but as far as I'm aware they're doing alright. Take a step back here, I've got my carrots. The giant carrots, they've reacted well. They're coming up there nicely. I've given them a drink from the top and also drink from the bottom as well. So I've just lightly doused the top um, and mainly fed from the bottom as well. Um, that's the reason why, but as soon as I lift that up, there's a good chance that they're all going to drop out of the bottom. So I'm going to keep them in the tree. <laughs> and these two here are the last remaining onions from my e-head. So these are my own saved seed from the e-head that I had. And these onions in the pots here are the last of once again my own saved seed so starting from here to here i've got from the a head and also from the b head and oh, neither. they're all they've all kicked up lovely here i ran out of pots i uh, ran out of clips sorry so they're all just uh standing on their own free will at the moment which is nice to see see if there's any roots on the bottom yet nothing yet oh there is just there so They've responded well to being put into one litres, and they'll be going into three litres, then be planted out. These are going to be the last lot. Nine of these are already spoken for, they're already for Grandad Dave. A few chilies in there. Got some peppers there, and some Romano peppers for my own saved Romano pepper. Um, and some Caribbean blend there as well, and also my Joe's Long chilli at the back. So at least I've gotten some Joe's Long chilli at the moment. These are the sunflowers from the, the two tall sunflowers. And also the other two are from the um the big headed the big headed sunflower. As you can see there, they're coming up well. This tall sun so sunflower just absolutely went crazy. Um I'm gonna get them taken out of there. Uh and because it looks like it's stretching for the light. That's a bit better. Right, I'm probably gonna end up taking these down to the allotment as well to get them potted up straight away. Even though they're not quite ready to be potted up, I'd rather put them in a deeper pot than uh, leave them in the small pots. Especially this one, because this one's reaching up already. <laughs> Might have potential, that one. Now at the front here, we've got some giant red cabbage from my own saved seed. These have been potted on, and do you know what? I think they're ready to be potted on again. They do need a drink, actually. Yep, there we go. Roots coming up at the bottom. They need potted on again. So I'll have to take them down to the allotment as well. A lot of things that's going to be need to take down the allotment, I'm going to have to get adjustable in here and see... Uh, Get adjusted in here and see what needs to be taken down and what can stay. Um, but I've got three here, which I'll pop on a little bit later, and I've got three there, so I've got six to play with. And last but not least, I've got the giant onions from seed. Now, these this is the onion other pip that I've got. That is looking tremendous. Absolutely tremendous. That's looking. I love the I love the look of this one. Hopefully, I get to keep it all away. It's a nice solid onion. Um Spin it on a bit. There we go. It's, uh, it's starting to, to bulb out of the bottom there, but it's a good height at the minute. And it's still throwing up some lovely fruits at the top as well. It's nice and solid. So I'm pleased with the way that one's turning out at the minute. Now these all, these other ones are growing as well. Got one at the back there. That one there. That looks like it's growing a lot quicker than the others at the minute. But uh, yeah, I'm, I, I must admit, I do enjoy growing the onions. You can't really go wrong with them, to be honest. You can either overfeed them, or you can't go wrong. You can either overfeed them, underfeed them, or you can just let them go and just ride your luck. <laughs> I'm more of the latter. <laughs> I'll give them a feed. But uh, I don't know what I expect from them. <laughs> it's just like I'm not expecting much to happen from these. Um, but I am quite looking forward to seeing how they turn out. So lots of things still growing in here which is uh, well, nice to see. Um, a few things are behind from where, where I would like them to be, but um, it is what it is, basically. I did it on purpose so that I can stagger things. Um, I know that these onions here, they're far too behind. 
um, for the shows themselves. If I was aiming for the shows, these wouldn't be ready in time. Um, so that's the reason as to why uh, well, these will just be going out when I get a chance to do so. I've got my main, I want my main onion selected. Um, uh, the quality onions are all down at the lot already. Um, so I just need to get them potted up, which I'll get done as soon as I can. Right, I'm going to make a list of things that need to be taken down to the allotment and then uh, I'll probably take them down tomorrow. So uh, I'm going to get prepared for this evening as I'm going to go live this evening. So if you're still watching, if you've joined us, thanks very much for joining. And uh, like I say, I'll hopefully you have a good night again. <laughs> and uh, at the minute, I don't think I'll be doing anything else today. So I'll catch you all over the next few days. Good Thursday morning, everybody. Um, I just came into the garden and uh, what a sight of a hole. Look at that. Tulips are all coming up. Yeah, what a difference that three years have made. This was all barren three years ago. A few bulbs, just leave them to go. What a lovely, uh, lovely sight. <laughs> right, time to get in the greenhouse and get some uh, stuff sorted out. I spent a bit of time potting on because it's absolutely blown a gill out there, and I haven't got the materials to start sorting out the um, the onion house, uh, the new polytunnel. Um, so I'm going to get the these uh, these onions potted up. So I've got two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I've got eleven of my own saved seed, which I'm going to pop into the yellow bucket, and then from the yellow bucket, I'm going to um, place them into the onion house. Right, I've just cut some uh, holes out of these bottom of these buckets. Realistically, like I could uh, smooth that off, but I'm um, stuck for time at the minute. And I'm going to put some newspaper at the bottom of them, we'll fill them up, and then I'm going to pop the 11 onions on. There we we'll have it. So, there's the first 10 um, quality onions uh, potted into the final pots. They won't be taken out of them pots until it's time for harvest time. I've cut a hole out the bottom of the buckets, and what I'll be doing is as soon as I get the, these uh, cabbages out um, of the ground, I'll do one side at a time. I'll feed the ground, I'll sort the cover out, I'll put the new cover back on and then from there they'll, I'll leave them in the pots on top of the white plastic so that the roots are uh, get into the pot so they're fully in the pot and then once they're in the pot I'll place them on top of the holes and that'll be then planted out. Now they're sorted out, I'm going to get this, uh, these cumbrians potted into 5 litre pots. I seem to have a massive bumblebee just coming to the greenhouse here. It's probably from all the flowers outside, but it's in the wrong place. It's, oh, it's really hell, it's massive. It's gone. <laughs> Let's get this door shut. <laughs> Blown a gear outside. Right, get these uh, cumbrians potted up. Then uh, time for home, I think. Well, that's uh, not a good sign. <laughs> well, it is a good sign because that's a compost all used up. And I'll show you here. There we go. I've got all the cumbrians potted up. So I've got 10 cumbrians here. That's left. How to 20. Actually, I've got three um, that's in the polytunnel at the minute, so I had 13 out of 20, so I lost seven, so it's not too bad. Um, they're all sorted out there, which I'm pleased I've getting them done. I've potted up three of these peats uh, back garden into three litre pots. Um, I need to get the rest of them potted into fives, uh, or the, into the ground basically, to be honest, they need to go into the big buckets. Um, I've still got these to pot up as well. I've got the Betty Black set to pot up. I've got these uh, Mackenzie leeks to pot up at the back. I've got the, uh, sorry, they're Mackenzie's, and I've got these uh, CSX's to pot up as well, but they'll have to get done another day. Um, I've moved a few things around in here, tidied a few things up, but I'm pleased I managed to get them done. Right, time for home, time for tea, time to relax. Feel a bit tired, to be honest. It's, uh, I don't know what it is, but. Uh, Feel a bit fatigued. <laughs> right, I'm going to go home now, so I'll catch you uh, over the next few days. Morning, everybody. It's Saturday morning, uh, which means one thing. It's uh, birthday time again. So, happy birthday to War Elizabeth, who's nine today. Um, we've had a good little morning together. Uh, she's busy getting her hair done by her mum. Trying to make the best of it once again. She understands the circumstances, the same as with Sky as well, but she's getting a few things and she's happy at the minute. Um, I've just come down to the pot for a couple of hours just to pot on a few things. There's your drinking game, everybody, so I'll be doing some more potting on. <laughs> um, I'm not going to see what I've got and what I've got sorted at the minute so that I can uh, organise stuff a bit better. Um, I've got one issue, one problem which I need to show you. So, tomatoes, all them tomatoes that I potted up, I've had a problem with them. The ones in the Pine pots are fine. I didn't do nothing with them, and they're looking all right. The ones in the little cups, some of them are all right, some of them aren't, some of them are yellow. 
I don't know what the purpose of what I don't know if that's that I don't think that can be cold because normally they go blue underneath. So I don't know whether it's something that was in the water. So I've used the rain water, but it's rotted. Um it could be the way in which I've transplanted them as well, like um by twisting the twisting them down. But it's pretty much killed nearly all of me tomatoes there. So lesson learned with that. That's a lot of time and effort going down the swanee. Uh, I'm going to take all the, the tomatoes that haven't done well. I'm going to take the compost and use that compost for sown compost or even for the carrots um, because I'm not going to waste it because it's in hot supply at the minute and it's not really, nothing's really been taken from the compost itself. So that'll be the first task this morning. These cabbages are looking fantastic. They've reacted well with the homemade compost and mixed with the clover. So there, there's the losses. It's definitely been confirmed. Rotted from weak point in the stem when I've bent them round to fit the pot. So lesson learned in future and also for everybody else. Don't do that. That's not a top tip. That's a deathly tip. The ones I've still got left in there, I'll get the chance. They've got a good root on them. They're solid. Um, the full tray here. Full tray of money maker. These were, uh, were the tall ones um, that I did. They curl around, that's not made it. It's part of them there. So, all of these will get reused. I've got other tomatoes which I can put up, but I won't be... Um, I won't be curling the stems, should I say. Well, I'm going to keep my distance. Stay there, lurgy carrier. <laughs> I'm getting bundles of lats. That's long enough for the, the ribs, should we say. I'm busy putting the first rib on. I'm going to put five ribs on all together two, four, five at the top, then I can get the framework put in um, either tomorrow or Monday. And done. Happy days. Getting them, them ribs put in. Saw the edges off. You can't see there. Saw the edges off, so they're not going to be in line here, because all I'm using for is strength and the bars. You can see. Just so want to keep everything the right, the right width apart and things like that as well. So what we've done is, the screws were the bolts weren't quite long enough so i've countersunk these in by just drilling a hole out so it's about halfway down so it's about it's about here on the there but that's solid that's not going to go anywhere and that gives you a good platform to make a start on the framework and um, possibly even tomorrow um so that we can get everything else sorted out beam across the top there because i had a bit of an idea now this beam is high enough so that i'm not going to bang my head off it for the height wise so what i can do is i can make the door frame up over the top of here so that i can get my head in and what i'll be able to do is if when when the time comes i might be able to put my solar panel in here set it across the top here because then it's not going to cast a shadow on the shot on the on the on the plants i mean it might do down here in the morning on this section and down there in the night time but that's for future that's what they're uh, looking into the future yeah, things that. managed to get that sorted out that's another job i wasn't expecting to get done and um, the jobs that i was going to expect to get done um i'll have to do them tomorrow morning uh, as soon as i get up and get sorted the beauty of these tulips multiplying like this is that i take a few home with us so i can enjoy them at home as well this is the plan for tomorrow get the sweet peas out uh, i've got a few things which need potting on there including the giant beetroot and the smaller cups I've got the bigger giant beetroot in there as well because I put all the compost down here. You see, I've also got these uh, these tall sunflowers to pot up as well. So, got them ones, and also got these two as well. So that's them to pot up as well because they're getting leggy. So I thought I'd bring them down to the garden, and then once that's done, happy days. So yeah, I've got my hands full with that tomorrow and also see what else I can get done as well. In the meantime, it's Elizabeth's birthday, like I've already said. I'm going to head off. I'm going to go and uh, spend the rest of the day with that, basically. Try and make it as special as I can. So I'll catch you all tomorrow. Hello, everybody. It's now Sunday. Uh, I'm, of course, down the plot here. I'm uh, going to pick up all of them tasks that I was going to get done yesterday, but got a bit distracted by that tunnel build. Um, so I've already made it. got to start here. I've got my uh, beetroot in here. I've got the sunflowers here. I'm going to get them potted in there some pot noodle pots and then get cracked on and get the sweet peas out there as well task one complete moving on to the next task second task sorted out and done 
Now these are the six that I've left behind because the root systems weren't that developed as opposed to the other um, beetroot. Now the other beetroot I've got in pine pots, um, that's a difference there. Eh? A hell of a difference. They'll be ready to pot up shortly. Um, just had a quick look at the roots of the pots and the roots are starting to protrude out the bottom of the pot there. Um, so not be long until they're going to go into, I might put them into the air pots, but we'll see. So as you've all seen yesterday, I had a big failure with the tomatoes. You know what the problem was? Don't curve the stems. Um, you damage the stems and they cause stem rot, and that's what basically killed all the tomatoes off. So do it a bit differently. I've got some uh, late batch money makers here. I'm going to take them and put this, put them straight into the pots um, that the old tomatoes were in. Because I'm not going to use waste the compost. There's still good feed in there, so waste not, whatnot. So I'm going to get on with that now. Right. So that's um. That's all of them potted up. I've potted the one one tray of getting 40 tomatoes. They've just been planted straight in. Let them go now. That's it. I'm not messing about with them. Um, I've still got a few of these to sort out. If I want to find some more Roma, I'm going to put some more Roma in. I'm going to put some more um, Garnas Delight in now as well. Luckily, Granat Dave's on the ball and he's getting his put in now as well. Um, the rest of them doing too bad. I think these are my Shirley ones, actually. Uh, that's bone dry. You get that in some water. Let's have a see here. Don't start it started out well in there, which is good. Uh, I don't know if they're the same ones at the back there. Let's have a look. Uh, they are gone as delight at the back there. So I'm thinking them potted up. But at least I've got some anyways. Right, I've just spent about 15 minutes constructing this frame. Um, now last year I like I had the sweet peas on this side and it got over the side here and it toppled over and it was a bit of a nightmare. This year is going to be a bit different. This is absolutely solid now. I've reinforced the top with canes going across the top. Now unfortunately the canes are probably going to bend and not going to be straight anymore. Um, that's the reason why I've used the good canes going down. Um, down here I'm going to put string from here across there back here and across up there again in a diagonal fashion so i don't have to mess about with that again um, and then i'm going to start making a plant out these are all a foot apart i'm going to just do a big mix up of all of these It. Sweet peas 2020 are all in. Had to split a couple because I miscalculated and miscounted, but that's them all done. Just should just need to come down every now and then and just nip the tops off to make a bushier plant. And then by the time it gets to about there, they'll just get left in their own free will. Another job done. Granddad Dave's dropped off. So we're getting some spikes posts for which fit these two boards lovely posts even these are going to be the two main door frame posts first thing i need to do though i've already marked it out that's the width of the door it's going to be three foot i get a wheelbarrow and everything through there um i'm going to dig these paving slabs up it's used for edgings and then um make sure that i want a three foot door if i want a lot more bigger one on it right being grand has uh, put the two posts in but we've made a mistake. It's a bit of a mistake. <laughs> so, because I've made that mistake, and that we should have really had these a little bit further back, I'm going to have to now dig them out so that we can move it back half a foot. So that that post goes underneath the bar. Right, well, second time looking, it's not as bad as what I thought it was going to be. Bit old Pittman in, 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 ingenuity. Uh, so move them back a foot, uh, half a foot. Use a bit of string line as well, which uh, should do in the first place. <laughs> but um, that's not too bad now. Um, so what I need to do now is just need to uh, make sure these posts are straight. Put a bar across the middle to keep it uh, the, uh, the, keep it flush and keep the distance right. And then I'll mark the tops and cut the tops at an angle so that I can screw down over. Have it. So the two front posts are in for the doors. Let's show you what else I've done here. In the wind here. So two posts are in the bottom. They're right down with the spikes. Got the main post in here. 
so we're five foot apart. Got them level as I can get them. So what I've done here is I'm getting the two main posts in. They are five foot apart. They are level on this side and they're level on this side as well after using the spirit level. I've marked the front here with a long lat. Um, I didn't want if these protruding, so I've done them with level or just behind there. You can see. What make me do is I'm getting this length of lat. I've screwed it to the outside here because this is going to be the runner frame. So I'm going to have the door slide that way because it makes things a lot easier and a lot more sense to have the door slide on a set of runners. So I'm gonna have it on the bottom on the top there. So I just need to get something for that. But that's 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 the main section done. They're not going anywhere. They're solid. The whole frame structure is solid. All bit of movement together. That's fine by the time I get the sides on from here, around the sides, around that side, around the back, down here and to the side, to be fine. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the scaffold boards for that. Um, I might use scaffold boards, I might not, I don't know yet. I might use them long lats. Not too sure yet, we'll see what happens. But uh, that's me done for this week. Leslie wants to head to her plot now. So yeah, it's been uh, another productive week this week. Um, of course, well's keeping well clear, well clean, and everything like that as well. It's been a bit difficult staying away from uh, from Grandad Dave, but we've, we've been sensible um, and kept apart. Gloves on, hands washed, hand sanitizer and things like that as well. Um, this is, uh, I'm back to work on Tuesday, um, so uh, whereas I'm pleased I've managed to get a lot of stuff done, um, I wasn't quite happy the way in which I've getting the time to do it because for me, helping people is my main thing, but I, once again, it was just unfortunate that I was sent home from work um, due to what's going on in the world. But, um, no fingers crossed that uh, turns a page shortly so that we can get back to seeing my loved ones and things like that. It's been a bit heartbreaking the past fortnight um, with the two girls' birthdays and um, people not being able to come see them, hug them, things like that. It's They've been absolutely fantastic. Cannot fault them whatsoever. They've been they've been amazing and so has Leslie as well. Um, so yeah, I'm back to work on Tuesday, back out there helping the people um, with their technology and things like that. Um, so it'll be nice to get back in the swing of things. On the other side, I won't be down here as much. Um, I'm working late this week, so I will be here down in the morning. We'll see what we can get done next week. But I'm pleased with what I've been able to get done and sorted over the past fortnight. There's a lot of things that I wouldn't have been able to do if I didn't have this time, unexpected time off. Um, I've got the first week in May already booked off for the full week, is that planting time. So I've got between now and the 1st of May to get the polytunnel finished. I've got between now and the 1st of May to have all the leaks potted up and everything as well. So I'm going to get the leaks potted up this week. Um, I'll do that in my free time. Um, and then probably tomorrow morning sort of thing. Um, get a lot of stuff potted up so it's done and dusted out the way. Um, uh, so it's... Uh, yeah, can't really... Uh, it's just <laughs> Words are gone from us at the minute with uh, everything that's going on. It's it's just strange, but I hope everybody's safe. Um, so everybody it, it hits home when it does happen in your area. It has happened in our area. Unfortunately, a lady lost her life because of the COVID nineteen. Um, it's somebody who we all knew, which was a familiar face in and around uh, my neck of the woods. Um, and of course, uh, my condolences to her family as well. Um, and also another grower that I know. Um, unfortunately, has the virus as well. So it does hit home when. People that you know or people that you know of have it. Just take care. Watch what you're doing as well. Wash your hands. Everything that the government and everybody's saying to yourself, stay at home. I know I'm a bit of a hypocrite. I'm here. I'm mostly doing my exercise. This is this is me getting out. This is me doing my. I don't run. I don't do any other hobbies, activities, or anything like that. This is what I do. And I document as I always have what I can. But yeah, thanks everybody for joining us this week. I'll uh, I'll catch you all next week. Welcome to all the new subscribers and all the old subscribers. I had a blast on Wednesday the live chat. I had a few emails from a few people. If you want to get in contact with me, my email address is deanslostheplot at outlook.co.uk. I think it's .co.uk. It might be .com, but I'll stick it in the comment the, the description below. Um, any questions, anything like that, uh, just drop us an email. Um, so yeah, thanks very much for watching. Thanks everybody for subscribing, and I shall see you all tonight on the premiere 
and I'll see you all next week on next week's video. Right, time for a nap. Oh. So between the time of me finishing this week's video um, at the allotment and coming home, I received some horrible news, some really sad news. Um, one of the subscribers who's been following me for a long time, um, I met him last year at my local league club. Um, he introduced himself and had a good old chin wag and a chat. Um, he didn't actually even, he wasn't even entered, I don't think. <laughs> I think he came along for support with the other guys as well. Um, Robert Gallen, um, unfortunately he lost his life today. Uh, I don't know if it's if it, if it was with what was going on, but it, it doesn't make any difference to be quite honest. I know he had uh, some health issues as well. Um, Rob opened up himself to the garden. He let us go up any, any time I wanted. Um, I've still got some, all of the Betty Blacks that I've got, Betty Blackleaks I've got are from him, from his, his stock. He let me go up, record his garden, record what he had going on. His little diesel heater that he had on back in February. If you go back in the videos, I'll see that that was, uh, that was his. He helped um, a lot of other people set up their diesel heaters. Um, he was always messaging me. And it was always lovely to have a good contact with him as well. Have a good chin wag. Um, he passed me advice, I passed him advice. I had some stock for him to grow um but unfortunately he's not going to be able to do that now so yeah take care rest in peace rob and i'll see you all later